There are still those in Washington who are resistant to change, who are more willing to defend the status quo than address the real concerns of the American people. What can I tell you? They're still out there. We're facing the same kind of resistance on another defining struggle of this generation, and that's the issue of health insurance reform. Welcome back to Harvard. That was, of course, President Obama today at a rally at the University of Maryland uh, with the Terrapins. Are Democrats in Congress on track to get the job done now? Can they deliver on the president's promise? North Dakota Senator Ken Conrad is the chairman of the Budget Committee and a member of the Finance Committee. It's so great to have you on, Senator, for one big fat reason. Every night on this show and other programs, we try to figure out what the heck is going on with health care. You know. So what's going on with health care? Are we going to get a bill? Uh, I think we are, but look, this is hard to do. You know, uh, as the president sa said, there are many who resist change, and change we must because we're headed in a direction that's completely unsustainable. Medicare is going to be bankrupt in eight years. We're spending twice as much per person as any other country in the world. One in every six dollars in this economy, and on the current trend line, we're headed for one in every three dollars in this economy going to health care. Uh, that would be a disaster for our families, our businesses, and the government itself. So why don't the Democratic Party, you have 59 members of the Senate, you'll probably get another one from Massachusetts when they get their act together in the next couple of weeks, you'll have a total of 60. Why don't you all meet in a room, maybe go to Greenbrier for the weekend, and at the end of the weekend agree on a bill and come back and pass it. Why don't you all get together and agree on a bill, ignore everybody on television, ignore me and everybody else, Ed Schultz, ignore everybody. Get together and write a bill and then come out and say, we got the bill, it's done. Why don't you do that? Uh, you know, we're doing that, but we're also understanding that it is important to have Republican support because getting 60 votes, first of all, as you know, we don't have 60 votes. We have 59 votes at the minute. We have one of our colleagues who is ill, who is rarely here. That takes us down to 58. And maybe a couple of Democrats who don't feel they can agree to a package. So there needs to be some Republican support, and we've done our level best to try to design this package in a way that's coming out of the Finance Committee to attract Republicans as well as Democrats. So why don't you get the 59 Democrats, invite five Republicans to join you, go to Greenbrier or the Waldorf Astoria, hold yourself up for a weekend, and come back with a bill. You know, that sounds pretty good, Chris. <laughs> but, I think know, if you went to San Tropez, it would still be cheaper than waiting another three months. I mean, Boy, can you imagine uh, what would happen on talk radio if oh, that's what I would we did? give you a break. I would give you a break if you had a bill. But let me ask you, what is the, the nub when you get together with your moderate Democrats, conservative Democrats, when you get together with the potential Republicans? If you could explain it in simple English, what's the nub of the dispute? Is it cost? Is it uh, regulation? Is it too much government? What is it that prevents you from cutting a deal? Uh, first of all, it is cost. As you know, the packages out of the, out of the House uh, were not paid for. They added to the deficit. The president has said, rightly so, we can't do that. Second, some of the packages out of the House, and I, I want to make clear, this is not out of the whole House because the House has not yet passed legislation. These are out of committees in the House, bent the cost curve in the wrong way. That is, they added to cost long term rather than reducing it. Uh, the president has said that would be unacceptable, and certainly it would be. So that's rub number one. Rub number two is the affordability of insurance for our constituents. And that is a clear challenge. We've dramatically improved affordability in the finance package. More needs to be done. A third major rub is a series of hot-button issues, abortion, those who are here illegally. And we're trying very hard to have a package that is very clear. We're not going to provide any kind of assistance to people who are here illegally and that there's not going to be federal funding of abortion. So those are issues uh, that are on people's minds as well. Well, you know, I used to work for Tip O'Neill, so I'm going to ask you a question. All politics is local. If you had to go back home to North Dakota tonight and sell this to enough people to make you satisfied that you've done a good job as the representative of the state of North Dakota, which you've been all these years, what would be the bill? In other words, if it was just the Kent Conrad bill, would you be done? Uh, no. 
If it was just the Ken Conrad bill, I would want to do something that re in a very serious way reduces our long-term deficit and debt load because that's critically important for the country. I'd also want to expand coverage, which the finance bill does. It goes up to 94 percent of the American people. It doesn't cover everyone because, first of all, if you're not going to cover those who are here illegally, you're not going to cover everyone. Uh, third, I would want a bill that has major incentives to move in the direction of the systems that we know that work. Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, Geisinger up in Pennsylvania, where you're from, Chris, yeah. Inner Mountain out in Utah. We've got to have major incentives to move in the direction of those systems that are high quality and low cost, and we're doing that in the finance package. What do you say to the young person who feels lucky? And you know, when we were both young, we all felt lucky. We didn't need insurance. We would have probably not even wanted car insurance if we didn't have to when we were 16. But you had to. Your parents made you. The law made you. What do you say to the 24-year-old boy? Because it's a guy that feels lucky. I don't need insurance. I'm healthy as hell. I don't want to pay a nickel for it. I want to go bartend or teach skiing somewhere. I don't want to join the standard go-to-office job. I don't want to pay nothing. But I want to be taken care of if I get into a, a, a bicycle accident, a light motorbike accident. What do you say to that person in a free country? I don't want to wear uh, a helmet. What do you say to that person? Uh, we're going to say to them, look, uh, you know, we're going to have a plan that is low cost. We're going to call it a young invincibles plan uh, for those who are 25 and younger. It'll be very low cost, but we'll have a, a catastrophic coverage so that if, God forbid, they do get in that traffic accident or they have some other tragedy occur, that they'll have coverage so uh, their bills don't get laid on all the rest of us. Suppose because they say right they don't want to do estimates, it. What happens if they say, no, I don't want to do it? Well, then there's going to be a penalty, a modest penalty, but nonetheless a penalty. Uh, for those who are below 300 percent of poverty, that penalty would be $750 a year. What about the family that just can't make long-term decisions? They always think in terms of feeding the family that night at dinner, maybe Friday night. They can't get past thinking ahead. They just don't do it. And they don't want to buy health insurance. What do you do to them? Even if it's affordable, what do you do to those people? Well, if it's affordable... And they don't want to uh, they, buy it. They're going to have a penalty apply. Nine hundred For those who are above 400% of poverty, which is $88,000 a year, there would be a penalty of $950 a person okay. a year. And, uh, you know, it's a we, hard we've got to say there's got to be shared responsibility uh, here you. because those that don't have coverage, all the rest of us are paying because those people do get treatment. They get it in the most expensive setting. They get it in the emergency room. They often get it too late in the disease state to fight the disease effectively. But all the rest of us who do have coverage are, on average, paying $1,000 more a year because of those who could afford it who don't. Senator Conrad, I want what you want. I hope you make it. I hope you get the Thank 60 you. votes. I hope there's some Republicans in the group. I hope it gets done. I hope this country has a better health care system next year than it's got now. Thank you. Good luck with a very important program.